All right, there we go. I'm on stage, everybody. How's everybody? Had some technical difficulties earlier, about three minutes ago. That's why I'm late. Thanks, Tina and Marwan and, of course, WakeBot, who was hosting until I got here. So good to have you guys on today's episode of Unstoppable. We're talking about um, resilience. What is resilience? If you guys hear some background noise, that's because I chose to go live today. Chose to go live at... Um, at one of my one of my favorite spots, one of my favorite spots where I study, I kind of get away from the office, and you guys understand. So I hope you appreciate the uh, the, the background noise, <laughs> or, the, or the ambient background uh, sounds that that you hear. But we're talking about. Um, I want to talk about resilience today. Resilience today. Um, resilience is the ability to recover from or adjust easily. To misfortune or or a change that's that's what resilience is resilience is different than enduring you know we have to endure through adversity and that we do need that trait to be unstoppable but we also need some resilience and uh we also have to have the ability to jump back or recover from the adversity that uh and i hope hope some of you guys might want to come to the stage and and uh, share some stories of, of resilience, if you have any. Um, but, you know, we, we've had to practice it during this time, during this time that we're in, this, this global mess that we're in. Uh, we've had to have endurance. And at the same time, if you've been affected adversely by any of it, we've had to have and we need to produce some resilience. One of the things that I want to talk about is expanding your network. That helps you produce resilience. The greater network, the, the bigger network that you have, and that's why we're here on, on Fireside. I think we talk and we have a good time and we expand our network. The, the greater network that we have, um, the more the, the more chance uh, that we have expanding our, our, our network. Our, our network. Seth is trying to get on. My co-host is trying to get on. I said we're here, but maybe he's not seeing where we are. But anyway, expanding your network. Your network can help you through adversity. Can't be a, you know, I like people, I, I know people brag about being introverts and whatnot. Let me invite Seth to the stage. He's here. I know people talk about uh, being introverts and things like that, but uh, you need to expand your network. Hey, Seth, good morning, man. Good morning. I was just about to jump into something, man, and I see you jumped on. Thanks for being <laughs> on, man. I was yeah, waiting I on a different. I was waiting on the wrong page of Fireside for you. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Um, I was having a hard time too getting on, but we're here, and so we're is here. Marwan, and so is Tina, and we're talking about resilience, man. We're talking about resilience, and and I, I kicked off by saying that um, resilience is different than endurance. You know, we have to endure, yes, through the adversity, but resilience is recovering after it. Re resilience is can I recover from it? Will I recover better? How will I recover? Uh, I'm not denying what happened. I'm not denying that uh, something um, adverse happened. In football, we call it we call it a sudden change. When there's a turnover in American football, there's a, it we call a sudden change. All right, it happened. How are we as a team? We have to be resilient. We have to recover from the sudden change. So it's the same thing. So resilience is is building that. Uh, it's building that muscle to be able to recover from adversity. How important is it? Is it like an optional thing? Is this something that we need? Yeah. If, if you want to you, <laughs> you wanna be successful, you want to grow, you better have some resilience because adversity is going to come. Listen to me, brothers and sisters on here. It's going to rain. You will have rain in your life. Matter of fact, you will have storms in your life. You will have storms and it will change you. And um, yeah, so you're going to need some resilience if you expect to, to bounce back and recover, keep pushing forward, keep reaching your full potential. Yeah. And uh, yes, yeah, true. You know, one of the things that I kind of I kind of shared with them when we first came on, before you came on, was I wanted to talk about how to build the resilience. I know we need to have resilience, but how do we build it? Hi, hey, Stephanie, welcome. How do we build the resilience? You know, like I said, it's different than endurance. So how do we build it? And believe it or not, one way is to build resilience. I had it was I talked about expanding your your network. 
expand your network. You'd be surprised how your network will help you recover after the storm in your life, after some adversity has hit you. I know I was saying to, to, the, to the few that were on before you jumped on, people love to say, oh, we're, I'm an introvert. And listen, that introvert stuff is, that's, that's sad. That, you don't want to be an introvert. If you want to, if <laughs> you want to survive, you want to build resilience, your network is going to help you bounce back. Your, your network is going to want to, going to help you bounce back from some adversity. Listen, I'm not an island. That's why I'm on fireside. I'm on, a, I'm meeting some beautiful people. But I know if I'm going through something, hey, they might say, hey, hey, Ralph, listen, try this. Hey, let me connect you with this person. Let me connect you with this idea. You know, we're talking about building resilience. The storm is coming. And resilience is bouncing back after the adversity. And, and what we've experienced in the last two years, some people, some companies, some businesses have not been resilient. I know in my area, you see different diners are closed and are not coming back. And, uh, we had a, a restaurant. I don't know where you're listening from. A place. We had a restaurant here called Zen Burger, which was an overpriced hamburger. It was an overpriced hamburger, <laughs> but <laughs> it was a gourmet overpriced hamburger, but it was the atmosphere that people paid for. Zen Burger, you could, it was wine. It was hamburgers. It was, it was, a, it was a nice little impressive date night, you know, but they didn't recover. They didn't recover. They didn't have the resilience. So we're talking about what resilience is and, and how to develop it. And your network, your network is important when it comes to bouncing back after adversity. You think? I do. Yeah, I do think it's important because um, I think we all have blind spots. And I think that, you know, there's times where we've all been sitting with friends talking through something with them where it just seems like they don't see it but we do. And so I think we need to be in some, we need to be in the situation where we can have people around us that can see the path forward, tell us the path forward, tell us, you know, with clarity, what, what we need to move forward into what we need to do. Um, or that can, you know, maybe not be as emotionally involved with the challenges that you're going through, but still be able to encourage you. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's not, it's, it's not the, the, the close, close friends. And, and guys, I hope you're enjoying the background ambient sounds. I'm in my local, my local Wegmans. I chose to, to have a background sound today. But anyway, it's, it. uh, it's, it's, it's not, sometimes it's not the, the closest to you because sometimes, you know, they just want you to feel better. I, I like a network like Fireside. I, I like the people I've been meeting as I've been doing interviews on my podcast. I like those because they're, we're in the same lane, but they're not so close to where they might miss something for being so close. They're like, hey, Ralph, try this. Hey, try that. And so it's, it's important. It's, it's If you guys want to come to stage and, and talk about the importance of, uh, of expanding your network when it comes to resilience. Now, again, let's be sure we're defining what resilience is. It's the ability to recover from uh, or adjust easily to misfortune or change. That's what resilience is. All right. When it's in football, when there's an interception or a fumble or a turnover, we can't just quit. We got to adjust to that misfortune or change. In life, it's the same way. Whether it be a death of a loved one, which is so serious, which is uh, it could be the death of a loved one, could be a business, could be a failed business, could be it, it, you didn't pass the test, you fell short. Whatever the case may be, we don't quit. We don't throw in the towel. We have to be resilient. We have to adjust to that misfortune or change, you know, so that's what resilience is. And we talked about expanding your network. Another, and, and I want to invite you up if you want to come up. Another way, I'm excited. That's why I'm talking. That's why I'm bringing all this. I, I might think, well, Ralph, slow down, but I'm excited. Focus on your three feet of control. That means focus on what's around me. There's a story that, um, uh, I think Tom, I think his name's Tom Gleason. He wrote in his book, Embrace the Suck. Uh, go get it. It's a great book. He said he was climbing Navy SEAL stuff. He was climbing a wall and uh, it was dangerous. And he, he got up 80 feet in the air and he got nervous and he looked down and his buddies start jeering him on and start laughing and insulting him. And he looked and he saw uh, Las Vegas because they were in Nevada. And so the instructor climbed up and said, what's the matter, man? He said, listen, Control the three feet around you. 
your buddies can't help you. Down there can't help you. And the Vegas skyline you're looking at can't help you. The only thing you can control is the three feet around you. So control what's in your sphere of influence. We cannot control what's out of our sphere of influence. Control your three feet of space. That'll help you build resilience in this comeback. And that'll help you to adjust in this misfortune or this sudden change, as we call it. Control what, control what you can. And other stuff love you it. can't control, you just can't control. <laughs> yeah, love you that. Say, I, I, you know, I, I, I've had those situations in my life. I can't, I, I, you know, um, if you're just joining, I was a police officer for 20 years. I could not control um, every situation, but I controlled the three feet that I was responsible for. I mean, it's, yeah, it's just that's that. Good. Yeah. Ralph, yeah. I think we got, yeah. I'm not a producer, so I can't accept her. But on, uh, it looks on, like looks like Tina is requesting to come on stage. Would love to hear uh, from her. Now you got to teach me how to do this stuff. Let me get Tina up on stage. I'm coming, Tina. I'm coming. Here we go. Boom. Are you there, Tina? And Tina, if this is your first time here, Hello. You can, there you go. All right. There you go. So um, I'm a psychologist that specializes. In, um, resilience is really important and dealing with changes and transitions is often difficult. At the beginning of the pandemic, I was a part of a group practice and was going to go out on my own in February with my own practice. And then I had to shift and start working from home, get all this continuing education while on the side trying to build the business. Um, so I still launched in February and now I have a nine month waiting list. So <laughs> it was tough, but I, it was, it was resilience. It was the people in the community from my family and friends, professional organizations, uh, without them, without that support, I don't think I would have been uh, as successful with being resilient. Tina, that's an awesome story. Thank you for that. That, that and you, you know, that talked about your network, expanding your network and, and, and your network um, being supportive in, in that. That is, that is, that is awesome. I mean, we cannot be this introvert. I know my father used to tell me, you know, I was a little knucklehead growing up to um, And my dad, you know, I was a little knucklehead. I can do things by myself. And he said, listen, no man's an island. Now, my, my dad didn't know all that. Maybe he knew, maybe he knew more than I thought he did. But we're now seeing the value of having the proper networks, having the proper circles, having the proper people around us. Uh, I mean, look, look at what's happening now. You say you have a nine month waiting list. Yes. That is phenomenal. Congratulations. Well, thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. I love that success story. Thank you, Tina, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so it's very important we talk about building resilience, guys. You just can't, I mean, after the storm is coming, I feel like Noah sometimes. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. It's going to rain. The storm's coming. We're going to have to endure and build resilience. Tell me, Ralph, what are some scenarios recently that you've been working through some resilience or where you've been working through something where you've found like, okay, you need to have some endurance, some consistency. I, I almost think of resilience as like consistent grit. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Tell me sometimes recently that you've been working through that. I'll tell you something very near and dear and close to my heart when you feel helpless and, and this has nothing to do with business, but I'm a businessman. Um, I watched my father decline and pass away. And Man, that rocks you to your core when you watch your hero deteriorate and eventually transition. And so uh, you have a decision to make. You know, um, there's a way to grieve. There's a way to grieve properly. There's a way to grieve in a healthy manner without letting it stop you. I still had a million and one things to do. For you guys who don't know, I pastor a church. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I run a, a, a coaching and consulting uh, a business. I, I, I write books, you know, podcasts. But 
was I just going to just shut it down for 30 days, 45 days, 60 days? No, 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 no. Uh, I had to adjust to that grave misfortune, which is a death as a part of life. I had to, I actually went through a program we have called Grief Share, and it's therapy. So I had to adjust. And so that helped me build my resilience toward, okay, I had to adjust to life without my hero. And that's a tough thing to do. That's a tough thing to do. I'm 53 years old. And still, I felt like a child. I felt like hopeless. Now, I've been married for 30 years, over 30 years. I've raised my own kids. But when you lose that oak in your life, when you lose that oak, you're like, oh, my gosh. And so, yeah, so I had to kind of I had to kind of exercise resilience through that and uh, and still keep it going and still maintain. I still had to stand up and preach every Sunday. I did not take a week off. I had to I had to preach my way through and I had to serve my way through my grief. Now, I wasn't serving or preaching my way through it to cover it. It just really, anytime you're going through something, and I, this is probably something totally different. Anytime you're going through something, the best way to fight depression is to help somebody else. <laughs> so as I was going through, I decided to help as many people as I could. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, yeah. I remember, so, you know, we've known each other for a while. I know fitness is important to you. I know getting yeah. in the gym and, you know. If, Every day. If people hang out with you and your you and your son, they'll think you two are bodybuilders <laughs> or something. But I remember us talking a couple of weeks after your dad had passed, and yeah. it was hard. It, it was hard for a couple for a couple of weeks. It was, yeah. You weren't yeah. as consistent in the gym. You you took a break. You almost hit pause a little bit. So I'm curious, but it was necessary. So I'm curious to like with that scenario and with you know other scenarios in life. Do you think it's important to also, you know, we have these rhythms that keep us going through hard times and those rhythms are essential, but also sometimes we got to like, we got to slow down and pause and kind of reflect yeah. as a yeah. part of resilience. Yeah. There is, listen, rest and relaxation and pausing or rest and recharging is not a sign of laziness. It's a, it's an indication of wisdom. So yes, there are moments where you have to sit, reflect, appreciate, recharge and go back at it. It becomes a problem if my sabbatical is three years. <laughs> if my sabbatical right. is five years. But no, there, there's nothing wrong with that. And you know, you, you know your your rhythm in life. You you know what you need. And and I don't want anyone to think that that's a sign of, of giving up or quitting because you decided to I have to rest, I have to relax, I have to recharge, reevaluate, reassess. That's part of wisdom. That, that, that's, that's part of wisdom, but you get back at it. You stay the course. You, 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 you stay the course. So yeah, man, it, it messed me up. I, I kind of lost my mojo for a minute in the gym. You know, I lost, I, I lost my mojo, you know, <laughs> but, but thank God I got it back, you know, but I got it back by, you just keep going. I would go to the gym, ladies and gentlemen, and I would sit there. But the thing was, I always heard my father say, just keep going. Even if you don't do anything, keep showing up. I just kept showing up. Eventually, I got off the, I got off the uh, stationary bike and decided to just go ahead and start working out again. Right. But I had to keep showing up. I had to keep showing up. Yeah. It's interesting. Yesterday, um, I think it was yesterday, maybe two days ago, was on Fireside for the the Ripple Leader podcast with with our friend Chris Hutchinson. And yeah, um, yeah, I love Chris. Chris yeah, had yeah, one of his Chris, friends. Yeah. I think you were, I think you were listening, but Chris had one of his friends, um, from Austria, a leadership consultant jump in and he said something interesting. He said, we usually, we usually tell people stop sitting there and go do something or often stop doing something and sit there. Like yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's this healthy yeah. balance too, as, and I think it ties in with resilience, which is with like, yeah you know, endurance of there's got to be reflection. Like we can't just, right. oh, we can't just work ourselves. We can't just, um, you know, run, run through the pain without processing it or run through what we're dealing with. Like we had, there has to be some kind of reflection. So I've been thinking about that the last few days of like, when are the times 
where instead of just going and doing something and just pushing hard and just staying active and, you know, not skipping a beat, how many times do we need, maybe need to skip a beat and pause and reflect? And maybe that reflection is actually what gives us the strength to go through. I think that's important. At the same time, when we talk about, we, we always talk about balance. I'm not even sure if balance exists, ladies and gentlemen. But at the same time, I had to be active enough to avoid negative coping mechanisms. Yep. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? I had to be active enough, and I, and I, th- I think that's part of resilience as well. Be active, may, maybe not super duper active as to I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna beat myself up, you know, but active enough to avoid. Because if I sit inactive, there's gonna be some negative coping mechanisms that pop up just because I'm a human being. Right. Yeah, there's a difference between reflecting on pain in your life and staying at home and drinking all day. Right, right. Drinking all day or whatever else you're doing, you know. Yeah, so um, you have to find that balance. And if any of you find balance, can you please do a podcast on it and give it to me? <laughs> yeah, let him, please let us know. Yeah, because something always suffers, man. If, if I'm doing something, I'm taking away from something else. You know, so, but, um, yeah, so, so anybody else want to come to the stage and share and, and, um, God, Tina had a powerful story and let's, let's, let's hear your story of resilience. Let's celebrate you. Mm-hmm. Anyone else? Anyone else? Seth, what about you, man? Talk to me about your story, man. You got a story of resilience. Hmm. I know you do. I know you do. I know I do. It's, it's interesting because I feel like this is, it's a, uh... It's kind of an uncommon word. Like it's not a word that we're regularly thinking about, but I think that it's a word that we're actively engaged with. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, the, the concept of enduring through hardship or staying consistent through hardship or kind of like I said, like almost this consistent grit. Like that's a that's a thing. But I, I'm not like every day thinking like, oh, I got to be resilient today. So I think it's a good word to like bring to the top of our vocabulary. Um, yeah, and, no, and you're right. It's not a natural word to think about. Um, yeah, but I, th- I think it's a healthy word um, to think about. I, I mean, it's a great word I think, for Scrabble, too. Yeah, there you go. It is a good one. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that um, something, I, I mean, I've just been reflecting the last couple, last couple weeks on uh, – it's been about, I think it's been six years almost to the day, a little bit over six. I just had like my six year business anniversary. Congratulations. Um, and, and I, and it's funny cause I feel like one of the only reasons I'm, I feel like one of the only reasons that I, this sounds dumb, but I feel like one of the only reasons that I'm, my business is still in business is simply because I haven't quit. Um, and I think that through that, like there's been, so there's just been so many changes, so many adjustments, there's been way more pivots than I imagined. There's been, um, way more stubbornness than I imagined. Like there's probably times where I should have pivoted or changed earlier, but I think that just recognizing it's interesting because when I started my business, you know, I had this business plan, had this way that it was going to go and it didn't go anything like it. And it's been way harder. Um, it's been way, uh, it's been way harder, way different, have made way less money than I thought I would six years ago, but it's been, it's probably been better, probably been healthier, probably been, you know, it's been the journey that I've needed to go on. So I think when I think of resilience, like that's just been something I've been reflecting on is like, man, okay, the last six years, it's gotten a lot different than I thought, but I think that, um, you know, staying connected to like the higher goal, realizing, you know, my, my goal in business was not necessarily to provide X, Y, Z services. My goal was to help people with their stories and to, you know, create a business that, that empowered the life that we want to live and and empowered us to give in the way we just, we want to give. So it's just, I think that's something I'm working through right now is just reflecting on a part of my life that has been very, very good. And I'm very grateful for but it's been much harder and much different than I imagined it would be. Yeah. Brother, listen, I want to um, encourage your heart. Um, all of us are still in business because we didn't quit. <laughs> and, so, yeah. and so that's a good thing. And isn't it funny how 
when we first came into business, whatever you guys' business is, I, I know for me, and I can't speak for everybody here, but we always calculated the money. And then I grew so much richer without the money. Now, money is needed. We need it. I'm not hating on it. But when I focused the less on it, I became richer. And whatever I needed has always flowed into me. Whatever I needed. And, and Seth, man, knowing your story and knowing where you are and what you're about to do and knowing you at least the last three years out of the six you were in business, maybe even four, I've seen you grow and I, I've seen you be blessed monetarily and as a, as a man. And so, and when we're, so is it, is it the journey? We always go, is it the goal? Is it the journey? Is it the tension that it produces in us? And, and resilience is so very important. The ability to adjust to misfortune or change. We may get in mm -hmm. it for one thing, but we become something else while we're in it. You know, I'm talking to yeah. beautiful people. I'm talking to beautiful people that I've never met on a, on a fairly new platform. Yeah, I, that does something to me that money can do. Yeah. And it's interesting. Most, you know, when I first started, when I first started my business, we were part of this. Um, well, one, you know, started with a business partner that didn't work out. You know, we ended up uh, having our business divorce about a year in. But we started yes, in this, yes. um, which that was its own challenge and interesting situation. But we started in this community of entrepreneurs. We started in this, like, it was kind of this co-working incubator hub. And it's it's really interesting to look back and see all of the people that I've seen because um, very few are still doing, very few are still in business and even fewer are still doing what they were doing then. Um, and so it's just interesting to see because I know there's been many days and many moments where I, I sit there and I reflect. I'm like, oh, these are the days that people quit. And I think, you know, I have those moments in business, but I also have those per those days in like personal life too, where you kind of sit back and you reflect. And I think it's a, as a part of resilience, I think it's really important to have those reflections where you're honest about recognizing like, oh, these are the days when people go the wrong direction. Like these are the days when, you know, I feel like I'm at an important crossroads and I can go one way or the other. Like these are the days when people give up. And I think when we're on those days where a lot of people would give up, I think it's super important to like recognize to ourself and almost speak to ourself in that and say like, these are the days most people give up and I don't want to do that. Like that's not going to yeah. be this day for me. Um, but I, I often have those days personally, but also business wise where it's like, Oh, these are the days. Like these are the days yeah. when people just throw in the towel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know how in tune you have to be with yourself to even recognize that? <laughs> you know, how, you know, how, you know how in tune you have to be to even say to yourself, wow, these are the days that people quit. And, and this is why we need uh, resilience. And this is why we need the right network. And this is why we need platforms like this and, and coaching and listening to you guys stuff. But man, you're so in tune to be able to do that. And um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, that, that, that takes a maturity to even recognize that, you know, and I, I think that's a, um, <laughs> that's something else. Anybody want to come to the stage? It's a hot topic today, hot topic. We're talking about resilience, the ability to recover from or just easily to misfortune or change. And, guys, you're going to have rough days. You're going to have days. If, if, if all of you came to the stage, I know we'd have to be honest and say there were days I felt like just quitting. But in the um, the words of famous television actor ice T. ice T was given an award for the the, the, the longest running um, <laughs> the longest running African American on a TV series with uh, with uh, SUV with uh, law and order <laughs> and I love his words he said well if you show up every day if you show up enough you always get the award for being there the longest or the first just keep showing up ladies and gentlemen just keep showing up. <laughs> just keep showing up. Just keep showing up. And uh, it's going to reap benefits because I think all of you have something valuable to give 
all of you have something valuable to give. Um, we got about two or three minutes left, but I don't want to cut anybody short. Does anybody want to yeah. come up and, uh, and share and, and talk about this resilience thing? So we talked about expanding your network. We talked about focusing on the three feet of your control. What can you control? And then we also talked about staying active enough to avoid negative coping mechanisms. Staying active mm -hmm. enough so we don't develop negative coping mechanisms. Now, it doesn't mean don't rest, doesn't mean don't recharge, doesn't mean don't reset, but stay active enough not to develop um, negative coping mechanisms. Seth, this was a good one today, man. It's good. It's uh, we keep showing up. If we keep, if we keep, keep if we up. if we keep showing up, we'll have some we'll have some conversations that end up being good. Yeah, right. All you gotta do is keep showing up. We used to say in football, <laughs> every every pig finds an acorn every now and then. Just keep rooting around. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Looks like we got Chris wanting to come up, so I'm gonna bring Chris up before we go. Come on up, Chris. Good morning, and uh, thank you so much. Just very quickly wanted to thank you both for sharing your insights and for being vulnerable, open, transparent, all those good words that tell us all that you're humans and you care. Thank you so much. That's all I wanted to say. And I want to thank you. I want to say thank you to Chris. Chris, I, I'm going to call him the velvet voice of Fireside. Nobody on Fireside <laughs> has a speaking voice like our friend Chris. I listen to Chris show. I, I don't even know what Chris was talking about sometimes, but his voice just kept me in, in there. It kept me in there until I found out what he was talking about. Chris, thank you for Love being it. you. Thank you for being a professional. Thank you. Thank you for showing up, man, and, and for bringing some quality program to Fireside. And thank you for joining this program, Unstoppable. Hope to hear from you again, Chris. And there's another show happening right now with Scott Monty. Uh, I think it's called Timeless Leadership. It's happening on Fireside. Scott is another okay. voice on Fireside that just has one of the best voices you have ever heard. So I encourage yeah. anybody listening, go check out Scott's show that's happening right now. But uh, we'll be on we'll be back next week. Yeah, thanks for showing up. Thanks, Stephanie. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Tina. Thank uh, Marwan. Thank you for coming, guys. Share us with everyone you can. If, you, uh, if you're if you're driving in your car, want to listen to a podcast, go over to my podcast if you can. Unstoppable podcast with Ralph Graves Jr. Got some great guests on there. I think you know. I think you have a good time with that. 